Hello everyone, uh, myself Dr. Ankita Sharma. Today I am going to uh, discuss you the crystallization as we already have been discussed in previous lectures. So, till date, till uh, this lecture, we have already discussed about the uh, various types of crystal formation of crystal, what is the what are all mechanism which is followed for the formation of crystal and various uh, various types of the crystal formation. So, now today we will discuss about the Meyer's crystallization theory. Meyer's crystallization theory basically is the theory which defines the nucleation and crystal growth of the solution that is that is uh, due to the supersaturation after supersaturation only the crystal formation is starts so the mere supersaturation theory describes about the crystallization it basically gives explains the relationship between the supersaturation and the spontaneous crystallization. So, according to the Muir's theory, it postulates that the greater the degree of supersaturation, more the chances of the nuclei formation. So, as the degree of supersaturation is higher, as we all know for the crystal formation supersaturation is the main driving force. So, the degree of supersaturation is higher, it enhances the rate of formation of crystal. So, due to the degree of supersaturation, more chances of nuclei formation are possible. So, the supersaturation, if the supersaturation passes certain range of value, means beyond a certain value of supersaturation nucleus formation starts or it enhances. So, as we know saturation beyond saturation level we keep on adding the more solute it becomes supersaturate and during the supersaturation by the different processes we are carrying out the supersaturation process. So, supersaturation also after beyond certain range the formation rate of nucleus will be rapid. So, various assumptions of the Mears theory are according to Mears what it says the solution which has been taken for the crystal formation are totally free from any solid particle that may be the locally solute present in that solution or the foreign particles which is present in the that solution. So, assumption according to his assumption there should be no any foreign particles present in the solution and this theory basically explains with the help of solubility and super solubility diagram. So, Mears theory can be explained with the diagram mere super solubility mere super solubility curve gives the relationship between the concentration and temperature. So, in this graph in this plot we can see the curve C D represents the solubility curve and the curve A B represents the super solubility curve. So, In this, we can see A B is the super solubility curve, which represents the maximum concentration of the solution, maximum concentration of the solution that can be obtained by bringing solid solute into the equilibrium with the solvent. That means, maximum concentration of solution means the saturated condition. So, this solubility curve represents the saturated 
curve means the solution is completely saturated on the point each point of the C D curve means at different temperature at this temperature the concentration of the of the component or solute represents the saturation uh, along with the curve C D and similarly the curve A B. A B is the super solubility curve which represents the maximum concentration of solution which represents the maximum concentration of solution that can be obtained by bringing solid solution into the equilibrium with solvent. C D was the solubility curve which is the maximum concentration that is the saturation and A B is the super solubility curve, super solubility curve. C D is the solubility curve where maximum concentration or saturation is represented along with this curve and A B is the super saturated condition of the solution. So, here at point E, E is the feed point, we are taking a condition of E where our this is the feed, feed what we do is at particular temperature and at particular concentration the feed E at this point we are star we start cooling the this solution at E. So, what happens when we cool the solution from we start from point E it comes to the F which represents this point is represented on the solubility curve that at F the saturation point is there and further after cooling what we can see it travels to till the point G. G is a point where metal stable region ends or nucleation begins neighbor to the this point means the distance the space the area between these two curves that is solubility curve and super solubility curve represents the metastable region represents the metastable region metastable region at which at which the nucleation and dissolution take place at the same time as the maximum critical size of the cluster has not formed till the point G. G is a point which is at super saturation curve that represents beyond this point beyond this super saturation limit the nucleation starts or nucleation begins. Between these reasons the formation of cluster and embryo embryo and the nucleus take place, but at the same time dissolution also taking place dissolution of solute also take place beyond this point, but after the super saturation point G after this point this is the point where nucleation starts, nucleation starts and after nucleation what happens along with the point H, along with the point H and I and J these three points along with the point H crystal formation starts, crystal formation starts at H what happen as crystal start forming the crystal and crystal takes the solute and the concentration of that solute is starts reducing in the solution. This is the concentration of the solute as crystal start forming concentration of the solution starts decreasing. So, along this point concentration starts decreasing 
along this point crystal formation take place and concentration of the solution decreases along the edge point as well as crystal grows and the concentration of the solution keep on decreasing till this point crystal grows and the this is the exit point h is the exit point where crystal is taking separated out and the remaining solution remaining liquid that is known as the mother liquor as we know when crystal start forming there is a crystal and the remaining solution is known as the mother liquor so the mixture of mixture of crystal and mother liquor is known as the magma as crystal forming the concentration of the mother liquor keeps on decreasing at certain point at certain point the crystal is separated out from the solution and the the crystal is uh, we are taking crystal out and the remaining solution is separated out so this is the exit point so crystal formation takes place in this way so mears explain that ab here ab is the super solubility curve C, cd is the solubility curve and the area between a and c curve means solubility and super solubility curve is the metastable region where formation of the nucleus and dissolution of nucleus keeps on and at the point g where the nucleus stable nucleus starts forming and crystal starts growing as crystal grows as crystal grows from here we can see as crystal grow the concentration of the solution decrease decreases with the growth of crystal as solute adhere or diffuse to the crystal for the growth and the concentration of solute keeps decreasing in the solution so this is the exit point so this is the basically we are cooling a solution this is the metastable region at this point formation of crystal starts as grow as crystal grow mother liquor get diluted and then the crystal size is growing up so this is the mears theory mears says this is the crystal growth taking place by this way but there are some limitations of the mears theory as uh, assumption of mears theory is is the solution should be totally free from any foreign solid particle what are those limitations limitations are firstly we can see that there is a line that is fg fg line which is explained by mears theory is doubtful as we can see that appearance of nucleus is that has been shown that it takes a longer time and the volume of solution be the large enough so basically the formation of nuclei depends on the actu actually that is due to the that depends on the accidental collision of the molecule of the solute present in the solution so accidental collision of the molecule makes the cluster or it aggregates in a cluster form uh, that is uh, mainly this uh, volume of solution due to the accidental collision the formation of your nucleus take place so for that accidental collision we need a larger volume of the solution so that accidental collision increases and then crystal or nucleus formation increases hence the nuclei appear more quickly 
in larger volume solution than the smaller sample. First one, secondly the particle of the solute, there be the particle of solute. Uh, Meyer's theory is based on the assumption that the solution that uh, con consists of pure solvent and the pure solute. There is no foreign or solid particle present in the solution, that was the Meyer's assumption. But if it happens, then the solute itself will be or foreign material itself will be the solid particle or seed. If seed is already present at the saturation or solubility curve, the crystallization will start, crystallization will not wait for the that F G line, that F G line. If F G line, if seed is already present in the system, according to uh, Meyer's uh, assumption, there is there should be no any solid or foreign particle should be present. But, but if uh, solid particles are not present, we can see solute is already present. Solute at the saturation, solute particle acts as a seed, and it will the nucleation will start here itself, but according to Meyer, it follows the path F G, which is not making the sense. So, it is not possible. So, the pure solvent and pure solute without the presence of any solid particle, whereas we can see the solute itself or any foreign material that is present in the solution. So, presence of that particle has found that the crystallization occurs well before the line F G. So, it will not wait for the F G trend and next third uh, next point is any foreign solid particle be introduced even in colloidal or atmospheric material crystallization can occur as the particle the existence of fixed super solubility curve such as F G according to Meyer's theory is not possible. So, this, these are the limitations due to which Meyer's theory is not actually possible. So, these are the about Meyer's theory and the limitation of the Meyer theory. If you have any query you can ask me or you can contact me on the email id Dr. Ankita Sharma 2015 at gmail.com. Thank you.